Well, it is the end of another day. I'm out here in the garage enjoying a cigar. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, tonight, I was thinking about anxiety and wondering if that is something that you all face on a regular basis. Um, I remember as a kid, I used to think that when I became an adult, anxiety wouldn't be something that came up at all. And as you can probably understand, that is not the case. Uh, more often than not, the older you get, the more opportunity there is for you to be anxious about more and more things. You become aware of things that could go wrong. You become aware of things that you do not have. You become aware of things that you will be responsible for. Uh, there are things that are out of your control. And so the list goes on and on for what could pile on the anxiety. Now, there's an, a phenomenon. I don't know if it has been the case uh, throughout history. I imagine it has, but for some reason, it was not something that I thought was an option. And that would be to try and escape or avoid anxiety. Now that shows up in many forms. For some people, it is to escape to a drug or drink, um, something to numb the pain, take your mind off of what's going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it seems like today, I hear more and more people talking about the things that they have to take, medications prescribed by doctors for anxiety. And, you know, I know that COVID and the isolation that came with that only intensified everybody's anxiety. But I want to challenge you in something that instead of trying to avoid anxiety, instead try and face it. Now, I know that that is something that can be daunting, especially if your anxiety literally cripples you. You are frozen with fear or you run away to avoid the situation that's going to, um, to trigger that anxiety. It may be going out. It may be sitting down to do a budget. It may be trying to work on the house. Um, and so I don't want to minimize the things that you feel as being real, that those things that are putting pressure on you mentally, that are causing your physicality to change, your heart starts racing, your breathing starts becoming irregular, you start getting lightheaded. I know that there are tons of things that would line up physically to say that the anxiety is too much. But I want to challenge you tonight instead to start doing little things daily to improve your ability to handle anxiety. And one of those things that you can do is to take simple steps to get simple wins. Uh, Jordan Peterson is um, very notorious for saying this to aim up. He says, aim low, but aim up. And I think that's really important because if you see, for instance, your house and you are looking at a mess that is just out of control and you think about trying to either to purge or to organize or to fix something, I know personally, whenever I have something that needs to be fixed, I am not Mr. Fix-It. Um, and so I can deal with a lot of that anxiety. So what I will do is I will start doing things that give me little wins. So maybe it's uh, cleaning up the area where the fix needs to happen. For instance, if we needed uh, a bathroom shower curtain reinstalled and I could have gone with the simple fix to do the twist, to provide tension on the shower curtain, uh, but I have kids. And the reason that my shower curtain needed to be replaced was because one of my children pulled the shower curtain down on my wife's head while she was bathing our other children. So it was a little intense at that moment, but I knew that if I would have got another shower curtain that was the same type of design, I would have run into problems. Now, 
I opted for something that I could screw into the wall. As I said, I am not a Mr. Fix-It at all. I have tried installing uh, those children gates and I have successfully installed three of them, but one of them cost me severely. I was drilling into our wall and we live in an older home and so the wood is pretty much concrete, but I drilled into the wall and I made the mistake of holding what I was using to measure in place instead of drawing in it and then removing it and using a, a single hand or two hands on the drill to drill. I had my hand on the wall and was drilling in. Well, as I said, the wood was like concrete and so it broke my drill bit. Well, the drill bit, of course, went straight for my finger and I drilled all the way through my finger. It came out on the other side. I didn't know what happened. I knew that I experienced significant pain. I jumped up screaming, what happened? And I run to the sink and I've got my finger underneath the sink and blood is coming from, forgive me if that's too much for you, but coming from both sides of my finger. And then I saw a fingernail sticking out through the other end of my finger. Well, after several months, the rest of the fingernail came all the way out and I had a fear of drilling after that. Now I've drilled some things since then, but it has not been as intense of uh, a project as putting up a shower curtain. And I say intense, I know for you handymen out there, that's a laughable uh, scenario, but you have to know I had to overcome that anxiety of, am I gonna drill through my finger again? I learned from my mistakes, but the first thing that I did was I ensured nobody else was in the room whenever I started to drill. My wife was actually out of town. My kids were with my in-laws. And so I was able to get everything that could possibly distract me out of that bathroom. I cleaned up the tub and everything. Little things that I could do as a win to prepare for this thing that was going to cause me severe anxiety. Well, I drilled it in. It's not perfect, but you know what? It is sturdy. It's not coming down. And I can look at that and remind myself that I can face hard things. So maybe for you, it's something as simple as you get up in the morning and you normally don't make your bed. Maybe start by making your bed. It could change your, your mindset for the rest of the day and give you that positive boost of, hey, you know what? I went ahead and made the extra effort today. Maybe I can face this, or maybe I can do that. Maybe I can work on this one room. Maybe I can work on this project that I've been thinking about doing, but I've been anxious to do it. Start trying to push yourself a little bit and get the small wins that will give you the boost to face those things of anxiety. You have those serotonin levels elevated, and so you can handle anxiety in a way that doesn't require you to numb it, doesn't require you to avoid it, because I promise you that anxiety will not go away. It will never disappear. And so by pushing it off, by trying to escape, you're actually just prolonging the inevitable and potentially increasing the impact that that anxiety could have on you. So I don't want you to be a slave to anxiety. I don't want you to be stuck feeling like nothing can change. You can't face anything. It's something that you can do. And I want to read tonight uh, real quick out of 1 Peter 5. And it, and it kind of ends with this notion of what we can do in addition to just getting those wins, what scripture tells us to do. And I promise you, this is extremely helpful as well. If you've never done this to try this as well, it says the elders who are among you, this is first Peter five, the elders who are among you, I exhort, I am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And, then, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crowns of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves, and here's the part, under the mighty hand of God that life may exalt you in due time, 
casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. And that's the piece that I wanted to really drive home is cast all your cares upon him. What's interesting is I never noticed this following that because our temptation is to carry our cares, right? And to try and medicate them. And it says in verse eight, be sober, be sober. I think that's so interesting that after he gives us that admonition to cast your cares on Christ, that we are to be sober. Don't run to those things that you normally run to. Instead, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if you don't think that if you numb your pain, if you run and try and escape from your anxiety, that the enemy is not going to be sitting there waiting to make it worse for you when you come out of that um, altered mindset. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. You are not alone in this. You are not alone in this. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Well, I hope that encourages you. I hope it challenges you. I really would love to hear more about some of the things that you maybe tried to change a little bit. Maybe you altered that that you started to see a difference in your anxiety levels as you got those small wins, if, as you faced those things that seemed insurmountable. I would love to hear about how you handled it, how it went. If it was as bad as you thought it was, if it was worse than you thought it was, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to talk about it and see if we can uh, encourage you as you continue to try and better yourself. Well, if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you like the content, please give me that thumbs up. And if you like it enough, share it on social media. And like I said, as always, put those comments in there. I really do appreciate it. I love talking with you. I love hearing what resonates as well. And if you are in the Lebanon area, I would love for you to join me to share a cigar and change the world.